Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Jonathan Munoz Pru. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I'm the director of cultural programming here at A Noise Within. Welcome to Noise Now's Indian Folk Dance Workshop. And uh, for today's workshop, I'm excited to invite on the virtual stage Shivani Thacker. Welcome, Shivani. Hi. I'm going to give you a, a, a brief introduction for our audience members who don't yet know you or your work. Uh, Shivani is the artistic director of MKM Bali Stars. She was also a Noise Now collaborator and co-producer of the 2019 Diwali Block Party at A Noise Within. And she also uh, led the 2020 Her Story Residency with Noise Now. And this is Shivani's third virtual conversation. She did one on reimagining the classics and another on um, uh, Bali Star's Indian classical dance. And those are both available uh, for free on YouTube now. Uh, so welcome Shivani, we're so excited to have you today. Thanks for having me, I'm excited to be here. Oh, it's our pleasure. So uh, we've heard maybe a little bit about Bollywood and you've of course done a workshop with us about classical dance. What are folk dances in India? What does that refer to? Absolutely. So I like to think of dance in three categories. Um, and these are really broad um, categories that, that I like to think of them in. We have classical dance, um, which I'd done the workshop in before. And um, in India, we have eight different classical styles. And I like to compare classical dance to classical ballet. So they're very intricate. They go back thousands of years. Um, and they have a very strong technical element and technique um, base. Um, the other category of dance, Jonathan, that you mentioned is Bollywood. And Bollywood we're pretty familiar with because of So You Think You Can Dance, the movie Slumdog Millionaire. And basically these are the dances that are commercial dances that come out of our Indian movie industry. Um, Bollywood is um, the Hindi uh, language movie industry. So we have multiple film industries in India, depending on languages. Um, but the Hindi language industry is the most um, popular worldwide. And um, 80 to 90% of the movies are musical. So they're like song and dance numbers that are famous um, when we think of uh, Western musicals like um, West Side Story or Chicago, there's signature choreographies that pop out. And similarly, the songs and dances that come from Bollywood um, are, is that commercial dance style. And the final category that I really love um, and like to think about is folk dances in India. So when we talk about folk dances, um, First of all, we're talking about dances that are community-based dances. So when we're thinking um, in terms of our Western world um, reference points and context, um, you know, line dancing, square dancing, um, you know, more uh, common nowadays, uh, the Macarena when you go to a party. Where I was just gonna guess. Yeah, can, no, no. <laughs> everybody can participate. Um, there are some basic moves. Um, that are relatively easy to pick up or learn. Um, the focus is dancing with your friends, dancing with the community. Um, the spirit or emotion behind the dances tends to be um, celebratory. Um, there is in India some storytelling elements to some of the dances, um, but generally folk dances are uh, are, are engaged in, you know, in group gatherings. So whether it's a festival or a celebration, a wedding, a party, um, religious um, gatherings that may happen. And in India, um, we have, India is a very vast country, so we have multiple types of folk dances. So when we say folk dancing, we're not just referring to one dance, um, but there's hundreds of folk dances across the country. You already answered so many of my questions. This is really exciting. And, and, and in a few moments, we'll get to the actual workshop portion uh, and we'll, we'll learn some dance. Um, yeah. But let's see what other questions I have for you. Um, you know, are, are these dances done by certain members of the community or is it really open to everyone? Can you tell us more about yeah. that? Yeah. Um, so I would say generally speaking, and again, like I said, it changes from region to region. And, and like we have hundreds of folk dances. Um, Certain folk dances are predominantly performed by, by men. Some folk dances are predominantly performed by women and some are co-ed. Um, so it really depends on the style of dance, um, the folk dance that's being done. Um, they are generally participated in terms of um, economic status and societal class. Almost everybody in society will engage in these folk dances. 
um, depending on who their community is. So they might, you know, engage with their friends, basically, right? Um, you, it's, it's more about drawing that connection between your peers and yourself. And they, um, just to go off of that, they also, they tend to be, generally speaking, group dances versus like a solo or a duet because they are so community based. Um, they are dances where they are generally performed in a group or an ensemble. And there isn't necessarily, I don't think, a limit to the number of participants. So it's not like, oh, there can only be eight dancers in this mm -hmm. dance. No, it, it, it's something that's very inclusive. You know, the dance, the Indian dance you've introduced me to so far in our collaborations has been um, very much about um, imagery and storytelling. And it's, uh, I don't want to label it performative, but it's very much for an audience to receive a story. And the way you're describing folk dance, it makes me wonder, is it intended for an audience or is it intended for the participants or is it both? Um, I would say both. I would say predominantly it would be for the participants um, in the sense that it is about um, connecting with others mm -hmm. and joining in this community activity. Um, that being said, observers also take a lot of pleasure and joy in seeing the participants engaged in the dance. Um, and also when we think about the dance forms in today's context, there is another level of a presentational folk dance. So there are festivals in India where they will have um, shows where professional folk dance companies will come and present choreographies. Um, even some of the clips we'll see today, um, for example, one of the first clips we're gonna see is actually from, in, in the US we have dance competition, intercollegiate dance competitions, where um, colleges form teams of these folk dances. Um, some popular dance teams are Bhangra dance teams or Ras Garba dance teams, where they actually compete other against other colleges. And in that sense, very much the focus is the audience. Mm. It is the storytelling. There tends to be a thematic thing. There is a little bit more thought put into um, props and formations and variations and partnering um, because it is a very presentational. So in those settings, the dances are choreographed. They're very specific, um, specifically structured. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about a festival, um, it's much more open in terms of movement as a participant, you see what moves happening on the floor and you jump in and you join in until somebody changes the move and then everybody jumps in and, and changes that move. You know, um, there's a lot more freedom when it's a community gathering. This is super exciting. It reminds me of, uh, it's a little embarrassing, but, but there are certain, you know, dance songs that when they come on at a club or something, everyone knows the gestures too. Totally. Just, totally. It just jumps in and knows exactly what to exactly. do. Exactly. So. Exactly. And it's also like, if you uh, think back in the day um, when we used to have like the soul train, where mm -hmm. people would like come down the tr lane and do their move and everybody would be cheering. And mm -hmm. then the next couple comes down and does their move, right? That sort of spirit, that sort of feel of um, freedom of expression and yet familiarity with the moves. Mm. Um, so at the very basic level, folk dance moves are not difficult to pick up. But when you get into like uh, people that are really like hardcore folk dancers or taking it as a professional presentational form, the moves can get quite intricate and complex um, and also very athletic. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what are we going to be doing today? Why don't you talk us through okay. a, a brief plan of how we're going to spend our next... Yeah. So um, like I said, in India, it's a very vast country. We have 28 different regions. Each region has their own language, um, way of uh, tying a sari, uh, Indian attire, their own cuisine, their own music, um, and with that, their own set of folk dances. So today, by no means are we going to be able to delve into 28 different, at the very minimum, regional uh, you know, um, reflections of folk dance. But today, we're going to focus a little bit on the north and the west. Um, so we're just going to be scratching the surface just to get a feel and, and, and sort of 
whet our appetite for Indian folk dances. Um, we're going to look at three different, um, very specific movement styles. The first one is from Punjab. It's called Bhangra. The second one is from Gujarat. And um, we're going to be watching, the clip we'll watch for Gujarat is actually Ras, which is a um, dance done with sticks. And it's a co-ed dance with men and women. But the moves we're going to learn are Garba, which is clapping movements. Um, and Garba is performed by both men and women, but predominantly women. Um, and then the last style that we're going to look at today a little bit is um, from Rajasthan, the deserts of Rajasthan in North India. And in Rajasthan, there's multiple different types of folk dances. Um, we're basically going to look at movement style um, that is, uh, that is, I want to focus on how we move our bodies differently. So there are um, dances where there's lots of turns called gummar, where the entire dance is done with spinning. There's dances with manjiras, with, with symbols. Um, today, we're just going to look at um, the gypsy type of folk dance um, from Rajasthan called Kabela. And we're going to look at how they move their joints and the hips. Fantastic. Well, I can't wait. Where do you want to start? OK. Um, let's maybe, let's start with Bhangra. And before we move into movement, I would love for our audiences to, um, see a little visual clip of what that movement style is. Um, a little bit of context, Bhangra is from the region of Punjab. Um, it's a very earthy dance. Um, it was originally done by farmers and people that are very close to their ground. So it has a very grounded energy to it. Um, they're very colorful costumes. And um, it's probably one of the folk dances that we're most familiar with in a Western world or Western. It, there's a lot of collaboration that's being done by Bhangra artists and hip hop and, and other styles. Video so much. Thank yeah. You for that, Shivani. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so we're just gonna learn some basic uh, shoulder bounces, the little head bob, and um, some basic footwork. So um, we're gonna first just learn our how our body moves. So the very basic position of the arms is out like a V, and um, so we don't want it to be too narrow or too out. You can have flat hands, or if you want a very um, relaxed position is to just sort of pinch um, or touch your uh, finger to your thumb, your pointer finger to your thumb. And it's just a shoulder bounce. Now this shoulder bounce is very much the pulse of the dance. So in almost every move, we will have a shoulder bounce. This is helping us keep our beat and helping us keep that momentum and pulse in our body. Okay, um, so now we keep the shoulder bounce 
And from here, from that V, we're gonna bring it down, keeping that bounce going. We're gonna open our arms up. And now we're gonna add a double bounce. So the double bounce is a one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and single, two, three, four and double, two, three, four and single, two, three, four and double, two, three, four. Okay, um, from here, the other thing I wanna uh, look at is we can do the shoulder bounce even if our hands are at different levels. So here they're both parallel, they're both even, so you're not parallel, but the same height, same level. We could drop one so that it's almost like an L shape. There's a slight bend in my elbows, but I'm not doing too much with the elbows. The focus is the shoulder. And I can go across and switch and across and switch. So without the shoulder bounce, all I'm doing is moving my body from one side to the other, starting at one corner and moving to the other corner, one corner to the other corner. And now I'm just gonna add a little shoulder bounce as I move that across, okay? Our feet. The stance tends to be slightly wider than hip width apart, toe slightly pointed out. We're gonna start with a little tap. Just a little tap and tap. And then add the bounce. Now the energy is grounded. So instead of being forward and over our feet, it's like we're sitting back. Our chest is open to the sky. Our feet are nicely planted into the earth. And we're gonna go tap and tap and tap and tap and tap and tap. And tap and tap, and tap. Now the last element, so we've done the arms with the shoulder bounce, the taps with the feet, we're gonna have a little head, head wobble. Now this head wobble, it's just a little side to side, okay? And you guys saw in the video, there's those big beautiful turbans, so there's a weight to that. So it's not like I'm here, but it's just a little bit. And again, this is all about feeling that pulse and that beat and that joy of dancing throughout your entire body. Okay, so we're just gonna add that last little element to it. So start with your shoulder bounce. Five, six, seven, eight, and tap, and tap, and tap, and tap. Now add the little head, and tap, and tap, and tap. Open to the sky and tap, and tap, and tap. Now, the next little part I wanna teach you is we're gonna do that across, so L on this angle to this diagonal, and L to the next diagonal. And we're gonna take our feet and we're gonna tap across, and then hop and tap across. Hop, tap across, hop, tap across. So it's gonna go a one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. This is from doing a, a, a double bounce. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and. So let's do eight of these into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here we go. Five. Six, seven, eight, we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Any questions? First, this is so exciting to watch. I am <laughs> thrilled to be observing this front row seat. And I just want to share um, with our audience who's watching, uh, I forgot to say at the beginning, if you do have any questions or comments, reactions, type them into the chat um, on YouTube and we'll see that on our end and we'll answer any questions real time. But Absolutely. then yet, I, I'm loving, I'm loving um, to see the connection to the context you taught us about for when these dances are done and seeing that there's um, 
obviously these are very introductory steps, but seeing that there's a pretty similar like scaffolding or shape to it that seems, I don't want to say easy, but accessible for a group to learn. Absolutely. And um, as we're just talking, I also wanted to just share that this is a very basic hand movement, just a flat hand. But, you know, if you feel comfortable with these moves, you know, some of the stereotyped moves of like twisting the light bulb mm. comes from Pungra. So we could do the same thing that we just did, keeping the feet the same, the hand, the, the head the same. You could go with the twisting of the light bulb. Five, six, seven, eight, and hit. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? So there are different hand positions we could switch in. Um, we didn't see it in this clip, but there is also a beautiful thing that Bhangra dancers do, which is tie handkerchiefs mm -hmm. around their middle finger and flip the handkerchiefs. And these are beautiful colored pieces of fabric. So the same moves you could do by flipping your hand and you'd have those handkerchiefs tied on. So there are variations to these basic moves. Fantastic. Yeah. And Jonathan, I'm going to have to ask you to keep me on track for time because I'm going to get excited absolutely. and keep going on one style absolutely. until you tell me it's time to switch. I certainly will. So do you <laughs> want to um, try this with music before going on to the next one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would love to, do we have time to add one more little move? Let's go for it, yeah. Okay. So from this thing, we went, eight counts of this. The next little move that comes up a lot is a chug. So this you can chug forward. Often you do the little head bubble with the rolling of the arms or the shoulder bounces. We can also chug to the side and wipe a wall and wipe, 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 wipe. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, chug forward, chug back, six, seven, eight, and wipe, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a great workout for the thighs. <laughs> I love it. It, it, it. I again. I'm. I'm imagining the impact this has with one full group, an ensemble or organism, sort of moving together, which is different from, um, say, the the gesture work you taught us last time, which was very intricate and detailed and small. So I'm yeah. loving the contrast we're getting invited to. Oh, absolutely. And and what's so beautiful is that these movements are so fun. Like you said, it's like being at the club, pulling them out of your back pocket and just having fun with them, you know? When I'm not live on the internet being recorded forever. I'm gonna try all these. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I don't know if they have it actually in LA, but I know that there are clubs in New York that have Bollywood nights or Bhangra nights mm, where wow. they mix in and do remixes of Western um, R&B and pop songs and Bhangra. Great. And so you could blend the moves at the club. <laughs> All right, let's try this with a little bit of music. Battery 70%, connected to Shivani's iPhone. Oh, 
That makes me so happy. I'm so <laughs> full of joy watching that. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, anything else before we move on to our second style? No. Do we have any questions or are we? We just get have to move on? Um, a, a lot of fun playfulness. So I think good. that's a good time. Good, good, good. All right. Yeah, we can move on to our next style. This is from where I am actually from in India originally. Um, so I'm Gujarati. So this is one of my favorite styles. Um, and I'm totally biased and partial to it. <laughs> it's, my, it's my language and my, my roots. So this is from the state of Gujarat. And um, in Gujarat, we have, again, multiple folk dance styles. But the very popular ones are Ras and Garba. Ras is done with sticks. And there's a lot of partnering. And Garba is done with claps. Now, the signature thing about this style is that it's done in a circle. So everybody's traveling in a circle, weaving through the circle, but the group rotates in the round, basically. So your sense of direction has to be really good so that you don't get dizzy and you don't lose which way the circle is traveling or moving. Now, at gatherings, at parties, a lot of times this will be performed at weddings, not um, on the wet night of the wedding, but leading up. There's multiple days of celebration in Indian weddings. So Ras Garba, they'll actually in Gujarati weddings, will have a Ras Garba night, where the entire night is just dedicated to dancing, Ras and Garba. Also, coming up in uh, our fall in October, November, we'll have Navratri. Navratri is nine nights of dancing. And on each of the nights, we will start at about eight o'clock, nine o'clock after sunset and dance till like two in the morning. And as the night progresses, these dances get faster and faster. So it starts slow. And as the night progresses, it gets faster and faster. And when these are done in community settings, they're done actually either with multiple circles so there's inner circles and outer circles mm -hmm. sometimes the circle might spiral and if you're on the inner circle you're moving one way to partner and the outer circle is moving the mm -hmm. other way to partner mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of fun intricacy with this um, there's a lot of stories of krishna um, we just actually two days ago had janmashmi which is the birth of krishna and um, Krishna is a very popular, mischievous, playful god. And so there's lots of stories. And um, he is known, there's actually beautiful paintings in India where he is known to perform ras with all of his devotees, all the gopis. So the gopis are all the maidens in his village. And it's told that Krishna being the almighty could take multiple forms and dance with each of the gopis at the same time. So there's beautiful paintings depicting this dance form as well. Wow. So the clip we're going to see is the, uh, the dance with the sticks, Ras. Garba is the dance with the claps. But you will see in this, this is again done for performance. So you will see the circular movement. Mm -hmm. but you'll also see beautiful partnering choreography and lines and different geometrical shapes. Fantastic. <laughs>
awesome. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so today we're going to learn a couple of basic um, footwork movements. Um, obviously, we're all at home, we're in our limited spaces, and we don't have the, the joy of being with the community to try to figure out how to go in a circle. Um, but you'll just have to, when you have the opportunity, remember this footwork and then try to apply it in moving in a circle, um, which is which is the fun part. <laughs> all right. So um, there's a couple of basic, um, foot, we'll start with feet here. Um, the first footwork thing I want to start with is very simple. It's just a slide. So we're, we're dragging that back foot. And we're going to step and drag. And then we're going to hop. And step, drag, hop. And then we're going to go back in that same sort of direction. So step, drag, hop, step, drag, hop. So we're going to go um, to the diagonal, diagonal, return back on that same path, return back on that same path. Okay. Um, so we're just going to have our hands. I'm just going to clasp, clasp them behind my back um, so that they're not in my way. And I'm going to bend forward. So that's another signature thing is that there's a lean forward when we're doing Garba. We're going to go step, hop, step, hop, back it up, back it up. Okay. Now you'll notice I sway my shoulders um, to move with my body in opposition. Okay, um, so if you can attempt to do that, do um, try to add the shoulders, I think it actually will help. Here we go, five, six, seven, eight, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, five, six, seven, eight, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight. Um, now we're going to add some claps onto our upper arm. So the way I like to clap is we swing the arm through. So you can see in profile, I bend my elbow, my back hand is stretched or straight. And I swing through and swing through. Now I like to fist when I come up. It's not necessary, but I feel like you naturally tend to close the hand or close the fist versus leaving it open. And then we open it, obviously, to make the clapping sound. So now when we're doing a move here, we're going to prep with the same arm as we're going to step with. So as we do this, we switch, right? So we prep with the same arm. So for me, this is my right side. So I'm going to prep with the same arm that I'm about to step onto. As I step, I swing this back, clap through, hop. Step, clap, hop. Step, clap, hop. Step, clap, hop. Now the last element is we have to bend a little bit forward. So we're leading with the crown of our head. Okay? So we go five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the last little thing you might have picked up on is when I was traveling backwards, I looked over my shoulder. To the direction I was going in. Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this is just, I, we're just doing it because it's a very basic move. We're just doing it moving forward. But if you were to do this in an actual gathering, we would travel in a circle. We could move around the circle with the step, we could also travel it backwards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's why when we practice, we're gonna do two to the front, and then two moving backwards, okay? Now just like in Pangra, we have different arms. The same swinging thing, Instead, we can do it with our hands behind our back. You can focus just on the feet. You can do the clap if you like the sound of that. Another one is a swing this way, like we're hiding our eyes or hiding our face. One, two. So what that looks like, the same footwork, same direction. We go one, two, three, 
and I'm snapping my fingers in that. Okay, so there are variations on the arms with the basic footwork. The other, do we have time for one more foot thing? We do, yes. Um, the other footwork that comes up a lot in Ras Garba is a triplet beat. So one and two, three and four, or one, two, three, one, two, three. Sort of like a waltz. Da, 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 da. Um, here, it's a pony step, which is just a balance. This is a very common transitional move in Bollywood and in Ras Garba. But it's combined with a jump. So I basically jump and pony, jump and pony. Now the way I like to think of it, I work well with images, is I like to think of that I'm in a garden or a forest and there's a log here. So I'm gonna jump over the log, see the bug, go ew, squish the bug. Jump over the log, see the bug, squish the bug. That way I don't get mixed up on my feet. So one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. As you saw from the video, Raskarba, there's a lot of high knees and a lot of jumping. So now we're gonna do this jumping over the log. We're gonna add the same clap. Now instead of the arms swinging back, we're just gonna keep it forward. One and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. So let's one and two and four, and six, seven, and eight. Now the footwork is still tripping you up and you don't want to add arms yet, that's totally fine. Keep your arms clasped behind your back so that you have that support. Here we go, five, six, prep seven, eight. We go one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. A little faster, five, six, seven, Eight, we go one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. Let's try both these moves with music. Also, before we go to music, if you were to do this in Ras, it would be the same things, except you're hitting the sticks. Mm. So instead of clapping, I'd be having the sticks going one, one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, or I could do a triplet, one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. All right, let's try this with music. That is so beautiful, Shivani. It's just stunning. Wow. So when I was at USC, my sophomore year, they started a Ras Garba team. Mm. And so I was part of that. It's my wow. heart. It's my favorite style. Oh my gosh. Well, and maybe one of my favorites too. I love it. 
Yeah. Well, catch your breath, but we're you. We can <laughs> this is great you. cardio, by the way, for whoever <laughs> wants a workout. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's fun when we do the live events where I said it goes faster and faster. Mm -hmm. um, in India, they tend to have live bands that play from wow. like eight or nine. Wow. So it's me in the morning. So it's super fun. Well, this next video we're going to see uh, does have some musicians. Absolutely. So now we're going to move to Rajasthan. And like I mentioned earlier, there's multiple different varieties of Rajasthani folk dances. We're just getting a glimpse at one style. The reason I selected the style is because it has the signature of how they use their body. So one of the things that you'll notice in the differences is that with Bhangra, it was much more settled into the ground. The energy was held back in terms of placement. So we weren't leaning forward. We were sitting into our feet, into that earth. So the center of gravity was lower. Our chest was open to the sky. The head was held high. That was the energy of it. And the, a lot of the movements were in the thighs with those chugs, mm -hmm. the open jumps, the shoulder bounces. In Ras Garba, the energy is much more buoyant mm -hmm. and there's a sway in a lot of the movements. So there is a fluidity and a sway in the movements and the focus is the rhythm with the clapping, the sticks um, and the partnering. There's a lot of interaction between genders and that partnering. The Rajasthani dance, the movements actually tend to be initiated, I feel, from the joints mm -hmm. rather than the muscles. So you will see that the emphasis is the joints, the elbow, the wrist, the shoulder, the pelvis, the hips. There's a lot of hip shakes, pelvis shakes, and there's a lot of turns. And when we do the turns, you'll see it in the second half of the clip. The dancer turns by doing a back bend mm -hmm. so that the crown of her head is the pivot point towards the front or the audience versus up to the sky. Mm. Um, and these turns are very signature of Rajasthani dance. They tend to wear beautiful skirts, <coughs> excuse me, and tassels off of their arms. So a lot of it is to shake <coughs> the tassels and the skirts. So the movement style, the energy, and the quality of it is quite different than the other two we've just experienced. an amazing shape that these dancers are creating with their bodies. Absolutely. Um, 
before we jump into the actual movement, I just wanted to share that in those two clips, the second clip is actually the opening of a movie um, that I was actually introduced to through flamenco dancers. Mm -hmm. um, it's a movie called La Chodrome that takes or showcases the journey of the gypsies from Rajasthan, India and how they traveled to Spain and sort of the connection between Indian dance and flamenco and how the gypsies brought that over. So um, what I love about that clip is that you really get to see Rajasthan is a desert. Mm -hmm. And that second clip really shows those gypsy tribal dancers in the desert mm -hmm. um, and, and you know how they used to express themselves. And I love that little girl at the end also just mm -hmm. you know moving to it. Um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. So one of the things, um, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna work a little bit on the arms and we're gonna learn a simple turn. Um, and so don't, don't slip in your home environment, do it with care, um, cause I don't know what surface you're dancing on um, and don't crash into your sofa or coffee table, <laughs> um, but, but you know, attempt it if you can, if it's safe for you to do so. So the first thing we're gonna do is with the arm movements. Um, we're gonna concentrate on moving, initiating the movement from our joints. So what do I mean by that? If I'm moving from my muscle, I'm activating my muscle and my limbs follow. So if I'm moving from my muscle, do you see how smooth this is? Because my joints and my limbs are following, but I'm activating from my forearm. Now, the difference is that here I want to activate from mm. my joints. So there's a little bit of a jerk in that movement and a little bit more of a um, different elasticity and energy versus it being all connected and fluid. So it's a very basic what we're going to do. We're going to push out and push away. Out and away. Out and away. And then the other thing that they do is they lean you notice the dancers were always leaning to, an, uh, to a side or to a corner, or they were leaning from their hips. So just using our upper body, we're just gonna push away, and then using the back of our hand, push away. Away, two. And really try to initiate this movement from your elbow and your wrists. That's what's doing the work. So you should feel that fatigue and the stretch in your joints. And then we're gonna bring it up to an L. So I went from a straight out to an open, raised one up so that I'm at an angle. And I'm gonna lean into that arm that's up and look at my arm that's out. And then switch it. And then come forward and relax. Massage your wrists out if they're sore. Okay, now the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna roll the shoulders. Okay, so we're gonna roll the shoulders. And as we roll the shoulders, I'm gonna pull my fingers in and push out. So my hands are coming in like a fan, like I'm closing a fan and then pushing a shopping cart away. Close the fan, push the shopping cart away. Close the fan. Now I'm gonna combine this with the shoulder rotation. Now I'm going to add a bounce in the shoulders and initiate from my joints. So you noticed how the quality went from being very smooth to being a little bit more accented. Okay, so we're going to do these two movements with some simple feet. Um, for this one, um, where we just did this pushing, we're just going to do a little pony that we already learned in Ras Garba. We're going to lean into it. And do a little turn. And the other side. Now, obviously I'm in pants, but this looks very beautiful when you have a flary skirt and you do it up to tempo, because then you're spinning 
with that skirt, yeah? Okay, and then the other one we just did, which was pulling the fan in, pushing the shopping cart away. We're gonna scoot our legs, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, okay? One more time. We're gonna go heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. As we do our heels, we're gonna close the fan, push that shopping cart away. Close the fan on the heels, push the cart on the toes. Heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, and heel. Yeah? Six, seven, eight. So when you come back around, I noticed I automatically started with my toes because that was what was next. So once you get into the rhythm of it, don't overthink it. With folk dancing, never overthink. Trust, observe, trust, and do. Okay, so we just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe add a little turn. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, and turn. Turn, turn, turn. It looks wonderful, even without music. It's so engaging to watch. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, if I am not mistaken, I believe when we did the Diwali block party at mm. Noise Within, actually the picture on today's Instagram post was two of the Bali star dancers doing a Rajasthani folk dance. Wow, amazing. That was where they had all the tassels, they uh -huh. had all the hip movements, they had the yeah. turns. And we didn't see it in these clips and this costuming, but another signature aspect of Rajasthani dances, there were cones on the head. Yes. So the girl, my girls were wearing the cones on the head underneath the veil. So that was a Rajasthani dance. Amazing. Well, we're, believe it or not, we're, we're in our final five minutes. Oh. So do you want to go ahead and do it with music? That's what I was about to say. <laughs> this will sound familiar because it's the same song we did for Diwali. <laughs> just so physical i can only imagine how it's just amplified by the films <laughs> it's epic well a Ooh. little fun secret the song has a faster version oh my gosh. which is like super <laughs> fast so when my company is working on this piece before a show i'll often make them do it to the super fast version oh my gosh when we come back to this it feels like a walk in the park because this feels slow <laughs> comparatively <laughs> It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, we're, we're going to then shift to wrapping up, but Shivani, is there anything else you want to share with us before we close today? No, thank you for having me. This is so much fun. I wish, I wish I had time to share more folk dances from other parts of India. We just touched the North and a little bit of the West. Um, one thing I do want to say is that if anybody, you know, feels so inclined to watch a Bollywood movie on Netflix, the movies that tend to take place in the non-urban setting that are more regional or they're taking place in the village, 
the Bollywood dances often steal from and in, are inspired by a lot of the folk dances. Mm. So if you want to see more, that is a good um, source to get some glimpses. I love that. I just want to say that my face hurts so much from smiling. This is <laughs> so, like incredibly fun to watch and I can't wait to try this on my own uh, when I'm not being live streamed to the world. Yeah, uh, yeah. Johnny, uh, thank you so much for joining us. It is always such a gift to see your work, to have you share your wisdom and you're just an amazing teacher. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This was so much fun. Thanks it's for having always, me. It's always a treat. And thanks to Annette Nixon, our production manager backstage, making all of this possible. Absolutely. Thanks to all of you, our amazing a Noise Within and Noise Now audience who has been so supportive this entire year plus. We cannot wait to see you back in the theater again. And I just wanna share um, some exciting upcoming dates with all of you. Up next, our 30th anniversary season launches with an Iliad live on stage in person, opening September 12th. And we also have a pay what you can performance on September 16th. Then our fall 2021 Noise Now season will be announced um, via email. Check your inboxes on September 13th. And maybe, maybe someone else on stage named Shivani might be a part of that fall season. So stay tuned. Lots of fun stuff to look forward to. And then finally... August Wilson's Seven Guitars opens live on stage in person October 17th with a Pay What You Can performance on October 21st. That's just the beginning of our return to the stage, our 30th anniversary season. We cannot wait to be there with all of you in A Noise Within Space. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Be well, and we'll see you at the theater soon. Bye now. <laughs>